so this is Matt Donegan from Business Spotlight. I'm here with Michael. Michael, tell me about you. Tell me about your business, please. Hello, Matt. Thanks for uh, inviting me on today. Um, so my name is Michael O'Brien. I'm a mortgage broker. I uh, have been in the financial services world for just over 20 years now. Uh, started originally in Barclays and went to, to a corporate state agency group. Um, started my business in 2008. Um, started at a time when, well, the day after we opened, Lehman Brothers collapsed and the market went into a bit of a bit of a free fall. So uh, a lot of uh, businesses were closing. And so uh, originally went to start a mortgage brokerage. Um, that turned into a mortgage brokerage and a state agency and letting agency business at the same time, um, which turned out to be uh, a good cho a good choice because letting business grew in that market. Um, that business is uh, still about today um, and uh, in growing, which is great. Uh, but my passion has always really been in financial services. Uh, so we provide mortgage services, residential buy-to-let mortgage services, and uh, more recently, specialist uh, advice on bridging development and, and commercial finance. Okay. So what, what were you involved in the sector in the first place? What, what Why did your feet land there? Um, two reasons, really. Uh, the first reason was I was going through the process of obtaining a mortgage. Now, when I grew up, I had no I. I we grew up in a council place in in East London, and uh, I uh, didn't understand property at all. Didn't understand. Didn't know what a mortgage was. Um, me and my wife came, my girlfriend then, but wife now came back from uh, travelling. I mean, it was about twenty two, and we went down the local high street uh, to find out a little bit about mortgages. And we went into the bank, um, and when I came out of uh, that meeting, I came out with more questions than answers, and I left very confused. Um, so I came out of there and I was working at the time at an insurance company uh, and the insurance company said uh, one of the one of the girls in the insurance company was offered a position she just handed a notice in as part of the position in Barclays and they said they were training mortgage advisors um, and it's at that point I just thought well this, you know I thought I could do that job I you know I was asking a lot of questions I felt that it was uh, you know with being trained I think I could deliver a better service than than, uh, than I received yeah. um and uh, yeah so we ended up uh, so I ended up uh, going joining Barclays being trained as a mortgage broker and uh, yeah haven't looked back since so you've written a very interesting blog to mm. have this out now is that part of the story that's in in that blog do you want to expand yes. that? Yes. Yeah, I mean, you know, my passion really is around training and learning and, and uh, lifelong learning, obviously giving a good advice. And I think good advice comes with knowing what, knowing your industry um, and always being on that learning journey. You know, things are changing all the time in the financial services world and probably all industries, really. Um, but, uh, yeah, part of that, 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 you know, I do reference... Uh, uh, how I got into the industry, um, but also why you know, I've brought a lot of people into the industry else who have, without any experience in financial services and, and trained them as mortgage advisors and, and still do. Uh, and I think uh, it's, it's important to me that clients receive the right advice and it's important to me that, uh, and, and I suppose that's, that goes back to, to that instance when I didn't get the right advice and we walked out there thinking, you know, purchasing for me and my, my girlfriend at the time wasn't an option. Um, fortunately, I uh, we went to another bank who said, uh, you know, we, we they could help us and we were able to uh, purchase a, a shared ownership property at that time. And the blog really talks about the more I learned during my journey, uh, the more I was able to do. So that started with purchasing a shared ownership property. I then became a mortgage advisor, found out a lot more about mortgages and then a staircase and was able to purchase the rest of that property and then was able to move, but keeping the old one. So with a let to buy, as I moved out and became a broker, I then realised that there was a much wider world out there in terms of mortgages. So I invested and started investing in buy to let, um, remortgaged property, uh, then uh, did some small refurbishment and developments. So everything that I've done is through learning what's possible and then being able to and being fortunate enough to 
uh, be able to sort of carry out those transactions and, and grow a, a property portfolio. And that goes in from bridging transactions, from doing uh, limited company buy to let. So, but it was all, all came through knowledge. So that's why I'm always trying to uh, support other people to learn and grow and, and, and move along in the same sort of path, but also our clients, more importantly. Okay. So your, your business growth, um, mm -hmm. how long has the business been functioning then? So 2008, we started as a one-man band, incorporated in 2013, so just over 11 years now. 11 years, and, and you've gone through a couple of fairly big seismic financial shocks. Yeah. In there, so you, you had COVID, you had uh, the market was affected by Brexit at one stage, and of course the cost of living crisis and, and inflation now. Had, how much has that affected the growth of your business, the, the core of your business? Been through a lot of challenges, um, and COVID was one. Um, the Liz Trust debacle was the other big one, um, and we were going through a bit of a growth trajectory at that time. Um, I just hired quite a number of advisors uh, on an employed basis. Um, and when the interest rate shock just started to sort of continue to increase, um, we I pretty much knew that that wasn't going to, we weren't going to be able to uh, write the level of business or provide the level of leads because I'd already been through this once through COVID and I understood what was going to happen. Yeah. So sadly, we had to make redundancies, and that was a real tough time uh, in both my business career. And uh, uh, yeah, just it wasn't it wasn't an experience so I'd like to to repeat. Um, but uh, we yeah we obviously had to remodel the business, which we did on a self employed basis, bringing advisors in on a self employed basis, and uh, growing again. Now um, we're up to ten advisors. Um, we are. Uh, Quite, we, we do quite a lot with um, accountants, so uh, looking at uh, limited company buy to let, so supporting business owners in investing their profits into limited companies uh, to then purchase buy to let property or commercial property. So um, yeah, we sort of found our our niche, if you like, and uh, and, and growing, growing steadily. Okay, did that did that niche did that come through a, a degree of introspection, or did you kind of did it did it come did you come across it and think, oh, this is good? Or or was it a real defined part of the plan? You were looking for that that niche. It wasn't <clears throat> it wasn't defined at all. Um when we were growing the business, we were pre predominantly receiving a lot of leads from estate agents. Um and so a lot of that is residential business. But we we um exhibited at the Account Extra Exhibition, uh, which is an accountants exhibition uh, every year. And we started to build a network of uh, accountants. And I put together a, a limited company buy to let guide uh, just because I knew it was a growth area of the market. Um, I mean, back in 2016, I could see that it was going to be a, a growth area um, purchasing limited company buy to let.co.uk back then. Uh, not that I did anything with it for a few years. Um, but um, I. Uh, yeah, I could I could see it was a growth area of the market. I wrote the guide, and it's something that I found that clients needed advice on because there was a lack of advice. I mean, there was fifty thousand SPV special purpose vehicles investment companies set up last year, um, and that's like a fivefold increase over the last uh, few years. So, it's a significant number of uh, uh, limited companies or people looking to own property using a limited company. Um, and so, yeah, so it was a growth area uh, and I felt um, we had the knowledge to, to be able to support those business owners and I enjoy giving that sort of advice. Yeah, excellent. Okay, so growth has been up and down at times. Yeah. Uh, ma macroeconomic conditions have, have, have driven you, have, have, have challenged business at times. What, what's been your biggest learning? Biggest learn? Well, there's definitely been a few of them. Um, the biggest learn... Um, the biggest learn, I think, is to learn how, what I've learned is how to make decisions um, and to to make decisions, if you like. And what I mean by that, I mean, obviously, with being a business owner, you're making decisions all of the time. But I suppose 
the big decisions is not putting them off, not procrastinating, making sure that you've done the work so that you're confident in the decision. Uh, and that will involve not just a pros and cons list, but a list of people you want to speak to, a list of people that could help, support, mentor, give you the confidence that when you do make that big decision, especially when it's a tough one, um, you've you've done you, you feel as confident as you can um, and then that way you can never really make a wrong decision because you know you've done the work um, and that's what I try and do so make sure that uh, you know when we've got those big decisions to make uh, I either canvas a bit of opinion from the team or from, from mentors that I've got in my life um, and um, or I've, or I've reviewed the data whatever it might be but um, I suppose that's uh, and then that way even if the decision go the way as planned it was never the wrong decision yeah i mean making a decision good or bad is better than a de than a decision being made for you that's right yeah there's, there's um there's a great um tip i heard once or a, a book i read on it actually and that is it, to imagine that you have your circle of advisors historical could be a, an aunt or uncle could be a business mentor could be Steve Jobs, but imagine them in the room with you. Mm. So, and that that kind of thing, as well as the people around you, leaning on, just thinking slightly outside the box in making a decision can help, can't it? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's really interesting because I think it's, it's a big challenge with every business decision making. What's the decision making process? So, okay. So, being able to make a clear, resolved, clearly understood. What, what about communicating that to your team? Do you, have, you, have you had any challenges with regards to, you've made some difficult decisions, right, along the way? But I think they're decisions as well. You know, once you've got, once you've made a decision, you know, those decisions on how to communicate to your team, you should do it individually, you should do it as a group. Um, you know, so I think just communicating, I think that's the biggest thing. That's another big learn. Um, so single biggest load, but the biggest, one of the biggest loads I've, I've, I've learned is uh, communication. Communication is, on, or the lack of communication causes the most problems, whether that's with clients, whether it's with uh, suppliers, whether it's with um, the team, wh whoever it is, whenever there's a problem, it's normally down to the lack of communication or miscommunication so i think you know taking care in in, in communication understanding that that's important um and it's something that i've lacked in the past definitely um and seen but that's something i've recognized over my years of business is uh, really trying to understand that uh, the way that you communicate can make a huge difference to the outcome yeah yeah i like that so communication clarity of thinking not being afraid to make decisions before they're made for you. Out of all those, or, or indeed anything else, what would you say to the, if you bumped into yourself walking out of that bank when you when you walked in there with your girlfriend and their wife, uh, as you're walking out the door and you bumped into your to yourself, what would you say? What, what would you say to yourself about running your own business? Yeah. What would I say to my business? Um... Just get on with it, uh, you know, because uh, you can do it. So, yeah, I mean, when I was employed as a, as a mortgage advisor, I never thought that I'd have the ability to run my own business. Uh, so, but I think the, one of the biggest things is always curious. Always curious. I don't take an answer unless I truly understand it. Um, I don't take someone's answer unless I've, I've got some evidence as to why they've said what they said, or or can it be done? Yes, or or no? Why not? Um, and then you know you've got to find out exactly why why it can't be done before. So always believing that something can be done. So yeah, just just go for it, and uh, you know anything's possible. Just got to figure out how to do it. If someone's doing it, then why can't you do it? You know. So I think yeah, yeah. It's, do, do, you, hmm. do you think it requires a certain amount of bravery to start one business? Um, definitely, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I suppose it's it's a vision. 
that's that's what I think. I think you know if you can see it, um, it just becomes very clear as to okay, well you've got to visualize. Well, I, for me personally, obviously everyone's got their own journey, but for me, if I can if I can visualize it and I can see it running and I can see how it's gonna happen, how it's gonna work, then um, taking the steps to get the brand and get get the company and and find customers and everything just becomes part of the process. But if I can't see something or how it's going to work, then, you know, I find it very difficult to, to start a project. But as soon as I can see it, it's, it's, it tends to be quite straightforward. So having had your business for over 10 years, mm. going through some fairly momentous times, is there one particular achievement that stands out that makes you really proud? Um, one particular achievement. I'm, I'm more more than proud. I'm more grateful uh, than proud. You know, it's it's a word that means a lot to me. I think I'm grateful for the industry I'm in. I'm grateful for the opportunities it's given me. I'm grateful for the people that I've been able to meet. Uh, that's the clients and people in the industry. So, yeah, I think I'm I'm just grateful to sort of be in the position I'm in. Um, I'm proud of the business we've created, um, but that's not just me, that's the, the whole team and that's people that have gone before um, and grown and started their own businesses and, and, and the people that are with me today. So, and the people that have yet to meet. So, yeah, just grateful. <laughs> so, yeah, actually, Michael, you come across as quite humble. You don't you don't come across as the, as the flashy guy and the, the um, how can I put it, the, you seem like a caring individual to me that that values humanity. That, that and I think that's reflected as well in the in what you're saying in your blog and your in your, in your kind of personal story. Taking that into account, what do you look for in in your employees? Are there personal traits? Do you hire for for culture or do you hire for expertise? No, definitely culture, um, and it's definitely customer first. Um, any of the team will always put the customer first and and that's it's not looking at the size of the case or you know how much they can earn out of a out of a deal it really is look, what's best for the customer uh, because that's how we've built our business through referrals um so yeah i think all, all of the team i can quite confidently say that all of our mortgage advisors um and the specialist team they're all customer orientated um, and believe in service and believe in communicating with clients and doing the right thing. So yeah, that's definitely a okay. trait of the team. Okay. So talked about team briefly there. So most businesses, in fact, all businesses have challenges in one of three areas. You could pretty much put all the business challenges in one of three buckets, time, team, and money. Time, mm -hmm. time has been sucked up by the business or, or what you spend your time doing, um, where you allocate resource. The second one, team, building building a big team, not big team, but building a good team mm. to, to hire, retain, train, culture. And then and then good old money. Time team money. You know, is it is the business generating sufficiently for for you as the business owner? Uh, and the other stakeholders in the business. What are your biggest challenges out of those three? Uh, is there one area where you think that's that's the biggest challenge that you have currently? At any one time, I've had one of those challenges going on. So and I think most business owners would say the same. Uh, so <clears throat> um, during those times when the distrust fiasco, it was definitely money. You was thinking, well, we've just invested all of this money in the growth of the business and and hiring people um, and it's not sustainable and that over the next six months I mean, in the medium term and god knows how long that was going to go on for so you know that was uh, money with that time was uh, was definitely up there um but uh, yeah i mean things are a, a lot better now the outlook's good um the markets i think people got used to the uh, the cost of money now so uh, the, the shocks 
come out of it to a certain degree. Um, there's still a hell of a lot of people coming off their fixed rate that are shocked, but the, the, the investors and the, the landlord, the uh, buy to let market, is starting to adapt, uh, which is a large proportion of our market. Um, so now it's about growing the team. Um, and, you know, rather than challenges, I see them as opportunities, you know, so we look at the opportunities and it's a, it's a, it's a nicer way to look at uh, the new projects that you've got to embark on rather than um, the negative connotation that comes with challenge. Okay, yeah, I like that, I like that perspective. Uh, I think we all look at it as a challenge and looking at it as an opportunity is a, is a, is a positive outlook and that's, that's good. Although challenges can be exciting as well. Yeah, yeah, of course. Mm. It's the uh, blood pumping sometimes. Mm. Uh, sometimes in a good way, you know. Yeah. Adrenaline can feel good, right? Stress actually, adrenaline, um, adrenaline, adrenaline-related stress can actually be good for the heart, as opposed to um, negative stress, which is, you know, well, it's bad for us. So yeah, that damages us internally. So talking about opportunity, what have you got coming down the track? What's uh, what have you got? That you're excited about and what yeah. services doing tell me about that yeah so it's exciting times um we've um we're exhibiting at the uh, campus exhibition again this may uh and limited company by to let is is definitely the, the growth area um but uh we've got home of mortgages it part of the, the, the group we've got home mortgages home specialist finance in terms of us mentioned the bridging development of commercial finance and this year sees the launch of home of insurance uh, so to service our clients a lot more on the business protection um, so home of insurance is is going to be launched around june um, and what underpins all of that which i'm really excited about is home academy and that's the training element of the business to bring on new advisors uh, and uh, train advisors in financial services and that's really uh, my passion and that's what I'm excited about launching to, to try and bring new advisors into the industry um, or upskill existing advisors to to help them on their careers. So you're you're your own talent academy. That's the that's the plan, yeah. Fantastic. So that mm. that's gonna allow you to fight for culture and expertise at the same at the same time. That's right, yeah. You generate your own experts. That's very good. Uh -huh. Very clever. Yeah. I've witnessed that sometimes in particularly technical areas, technical um, professions do, do that a lot. And of course, we have had previously a culture with professional services doing that, but I kind of think that's fallen by the wayside to a degree. With, with, I think, with, yeah, I, I think training in general um, is nowhere near where it was when I started in the industry. In you know, So I think... Uh, there's definitely gaps. It's, I think it's the investment in training um, has lapsed. So yeah, I'm excited to to launch that platform, and uh, I'm excited to see, see where it goes. Yeah, excellent. Okay, well, it's uh, it's been an absolutely fascinating conversation. I've really really enjoyed it today. I'd, I'd love to keep in contact with you um, and and to find out how how you're doing, how you how you're growing the business, etc. Um, thank you so much for your time today. Really. No, thank you. Thank you for the invite. Thanks, Matt. And I look forward to speaking to you of course. You're more than welcome. And let's uh, let's keep in contact. Great. Thanks, Matt. Thanks. Cheers. Bye.